Britain and the Sea. In the 17th and 18th century, a strong presence at sea was vital for maintaining Britain's political and economic power. But even the best navigators had difficulty in knowing where they were in the open sea. North-south position, latitude, could be worked out using the position of the sun and stars. But accurate methods of calculating east-west coordinates, longitude, had not been discovered. The Royal Observatory was built in 1675 and 76, and John Flamsteed was the first astronomer royal. He was instructed by Charles II to find a reliable way of navigating at sea. Longitude could only be calculated by comparing the time at a fixed or prime meridian to the east or west when it was noon at sea, which could be calculated by the position of the sun. The difficulty was making a clock which would accurately keep the time of a prime meridian at sea to compare with the local sun time. This problem was finally solved by the clockmaker John Harrison, who perfected his chronometer in 1759 and made longitude calculations possible for most seamen. Without the accuracy of the marine chronometers, it is quite likely that the Royal Navy would not have been so powerful and Britain would not have had an empire. The empire was gained through wars and conquests of colonies abroad in a period in which British vessels had reliable navigation due to the chronometer, while the other superpowers of the day, the Portuguese, the Dutch and the French, did not. Britain in the 18th century was a rich country and was adding to its colonies on the east coast of North America and in the Caribbean. There were great trading opportunities for ports on the west coast of Britain, like Bristol, Liverpool and Glasgow. Unfortunately, these ports were built on the human suffering of the slave trade. In the first part of the 18th century, Bristol was the main slave trading port in the country, but by 1740, Liverpool had become the major slaving port in Europe. The slave trade was finally abolished in the British Empire in 1807.